Hey guys, I want to show you some of the gameplay videos that I've been playing with uh, Chaos Fairy Plants. So yeah, in game one, uh, my first matchup that I want to show you guys is against the Diva Hero deck. Uh, so I just want to showcase to you how the deck works and uh, how it plays against a uh, meta deck such as Diva Heroes. So first turn, I think I win the die roll. Oh, I lose the die roll. Okay, so main phase one, he summons the Shroud here to search for the Infernal Prodigy. Uh, when someone does that, uh, when someone searches for the Prodigy, uh, that kind of telegraphs to me that they're on Diva Heroes because I don't think any other deck plays uh, Infernal Prodigy except for frog monarchs so i can't really logically deduce if they're playing diva heroes or frog heroes but usually a normal summon stratos into a and prodigy is uh some sort it signifies to me that they're on some sort of hero list all right so uh, first turn so when he does a pass here uh that doesn't really tell me whether it's a frog monarch or a uh or a diva hero because they both don't set any back rows but this kind of tele te telegraphs to me that it might be frog monarchs because they don't set any back rows for sure so I start off my turn here by summoning the Lone Fire. The Lone Fire here is going to get me Titanial. I want to go through all the Lone Fires because I do play Pot of Avarice. The Avarice will allow me to get a plus one if I were able to resolve it. So that's why I go through all the Lone Fire first. Plus I also have a Dandelion in my hand, so there was no need to get the second Lone Fire. Uh, so the Dandelion, if I can Normal Summon the next turn, can prevent uh, Titanial from being targeted. So he sets the back row here. I set the Dust Tornado. I don't set the Ultimate Offering here. And then in the end phase, I uh, end phase and I uh, take out the MST here. So when someone MSTs, when someone sets an MST here, uh, that usually tell, tells me that they're trying to MST on my attack declaration, uh, and then they want to drop gores uh, on the attack. So that kind of gives me the big like, um, it gives me a big like flag on my side that says that I have gores in my hand. So what I do is I set ultimate offering here, which I was always going to do regardless of what it, uh, what that back row may be. I summon the Dandelion here, and I swing for 300, and knowing that I have Caius in my hand, uh, I attack with Titanial directly. The only way they can get rid of Titanial directly by uh, <coughs> killing Titanial with Gores is if the token is 2800 attack. So what they do here is they drop the Gores, and I they don't know that I'm playing Ultimate Offering. So I flip the Ultimate Offering here to sacrifice the Dandelion in order to trip it for some for the Caius, and I banish the token, so this way... The Gores token, the Gores is going to be able, not be able to clear the Titanial, but it will be able to clear the Caius. However, I could protect my whole board by Synchro Summoning the Caius away for Stardust. And this gives me the impression, or gives the my Diva Hero opponent the impression that I might be on some sort of Quick Draw deck. Because some Quick Draw decks do play Plague Spreader Zombie because you can mill it randomly. So this kind of looks like a Quick Draw deck. Because um, if you look at the the deck, I'm playing two Lone Fires, I'm playing Caius. The only thing that's different about the this deck is the Dust Tornado in the main deck. But some some uh, Quick Draw Denny list plays Dust Tornado, and then some play uh, uh, some play Plague Spreader Zombie. And he he probably thinks I'm uh, taking Ultimate Offering, which is why I'm doing uh, this line of play here. So if he goes straight into Battle Phase and tries to run the Stardust, I can go Ultimate Offering, pay 500, and uh, pretty much stack off the Caius. And then uh, the Caius will be able to banish the Gores, he takes a thousand. So uh, here he needs to be able to uh, press pretty hard against my back. This is a really hard board to break, but he does find a way to break it because uh, he does have a Mirror Force in hand. So what he does is he normal summons the Gilman, banishes the Stratos from the graveyard, and makes the absolute zero. This way, if I attack with the Titanial, which I'm pretty confident that it will go through because of my Stardust, uh, he can simply use the absolute zero to destroy my, the rest of the board because Stardust can only negate one thing. So Stardust negates the Mirror Force, and then Titanial and Caius gets destroyed, and I lose my whole board. So he's up uh, on card advantage, uh, even with my Stardust coming back. Uh, he does have the Prodigy in his hand, so I'm pretty pretty much praying he doesn't have a Caius at this point. Uh, he has a Solemn, so he special summons the Prodigy. So at this point, I'm like, okay, he has he has he definitely has Caius, but he actually has something easier to deal with, which is the Miracle Fusion. And he banishes the Absolute Zero and the Infernal Prodigy in order to crash with my Stardust. And this way, he could just trade. Um, my little, he should have summoned the Sangha here and attacked me directly because um, he didn't normal summon yet. He only special summoned the Prodigy. So he could have special summoned the Absolute Zero, summoned the Sangha, and hit me for a thousand, basically. So he sets a Solemn Judgment here. I draw into nothing except for Herald of Orange Light. He draws a turn here. He activates a Lord of Darkness. And I think he draws into a Dark, yeah. He, he banishes the Trigodia, and he... Uh, I think he gold starts a future fusion. I probably would have gotten a miracle fusion right away just because miracle fusion in two turns will be better because this Sangan might get a, a deep sea diva. So I don't know if I agree with that play. Uh, but the Sangan attacks me for thousands here, so I'm pretty much uh, screwed. Um, so I'm just top decking here. I draw into Avarice, which is a really good top deck. So it allows me to recycle my board, which is why I play it. Uh, so I can recycle my Titanial. So if I draw Titanial here, I can do uh, 1800 damage to him. 
so I recycle the titanium. Uh, I have a Mystic Tomato here, so I summon it so I can attack over the Sangan. And for some reason, he uh, Solemn Judgments my Mystic Tomato. Uh, no need to do that, because um, the Sangan can float into a Deep Sea Diva. So I wasn't sure why he did that. Um, so he draws into a Wing Blast, which is a, a bad top deck for him, because he needs something to uh, fetch off this. Uh, he needs to discard something to do something to me. I take another thousand. Uh, I don't set the Mirror Force here because there was no need to Mirror Force the Sangan, as I do have 4,500 light points. So I draw into a Lone Fire, so this means I can have Lethal on board if I summon a Titanial. Okay, so I normal summon here, and then I go straight to Titanial. He knows that he can't stop that, so he just scoops. Okay, so game two starts. Um, let's see what happens here. Game two, I open up pretty slow. Um, I do have a Recruiter in my hands, which is nice. Uh, he sets his Plague Spirit Zombie. I'm thinking that it might be a Raiko, even though I don't know his... Like, I know that he's playing Diva Heroes, but I don't know if he's on Raiko or not, so I always give the benefit of the doubt that it might be a Raiko, even though <laughs> even though Diva Hero lists don't play it. So here, I summon the Dandelion, because I don't really care if he responds to the Dandelion here. Uh, I attack to, into his Plague Spitter Zombie, because I want to bait out the Raiko. Uh, turns out he when he wing blast here and discarded the malicious, uh, it pretty much eggs me on to believe that it's not a Raiko here, that it might be uh, like a Plague Spreader Zombie. Seeing the stats as it's 400 and 200, it's most like it is Plague Spreader Zombie. Uh, he discards the malicious here so he can make his level 8 synchro, which is really good. Uh, and here he has the option of attacking directly. Uh, for 400 and 800 to play around the Gores, since I didn't set anything. Uh, but instead he goes straight into uh, Falsify her because he doesn't know if I'm going to play Gores or not. If he makes a Stardust here uh, and he attacks directly and I do have the Gores, then I can clear the I can clear the uh, the Stardust. And seeing as he has no real back rows to protect the Stardust, uh, the, it makes sense that he makes the Colossal here. Thankfully for me, I do play Shiny Angel, so the Shiny Angel will be able to get me the uh, DD Warrior Lady line, so that I can just banish the Claws Fighter. Um, I could, I thought about setting the, the Shiny Angel, but I, I was afraid that he might have like sacrificed the Claws Fighter because I don't know he left, he kept three cards in his hand, which kind of like telegraphs to me that they're either spell cards like Miracle Fusion or Caius. So I definitely just contemplating sending the Shiny Angel so he can attack and do it, but I was afraid that he might sacrifice his Colossal for Caius and then banish my guy. So instead of that, I just crash my Shiny Angel into his Colossal Fighter and then get a DD Worry Lady. Um, unfortunately, in this deck build, I didn't play Cyber Valley because if I did, I would just get the Cyber Valley here, bring control of the Colossal Fighter, and then banish and draw two. So instead, I'm losing more life points doing this play because I didn't play Cyber Valley. So this was a lesson learned game. Um, so the next time, I can just play something else. He summons the Deep Sea Diva here and he goes into the Spine Gilman. And then I think he goes into battle phase here. Um, so he he attacked directly with Colossal Fighter, but I could have chose not to drop the Gores. I could have chose not to drop the Gores on that attack um, because Colossal Fighter is really hard to deal with. But I, I think I always drop Colossal Fighter. I mean, I, always, I still always drop Gores because I do have the Shiny Angel. So he doesn't know that. And so he what he does is he still plays around Gores here by attacking for 217. When he could have done more damage by synchro summoning into the android, or, uh, because this does 2300 life points, and he actually ends up going to a android here. So I don't know why he did it this way. Maybe he wanted, like he could have probably scared me into a um, into a miracle fusion, because if he had synchro summoned first and then go miracle fusion, it would have been a different game. But yeah, uh, but he puts me below 800. Uh, he puts me below a uh, break control, so I can't activate break control. So now I uh, don't, I can't activate it. I draw to a Dandelion, so if I did set the Shiny Angel, maybe that would have been a better play. Actually, yeah, that's a better play. Setting the Shiny Angel and then going to a Nova Summoner means that my Honest can protect my guy. Uh, but it doesn't matter. I set the Brain Control here to bluff him, and he could easily sacrifice. He has two ways to win here. He can Mind Control and then uh, steal my Dandelion, or he can just sacrifice for Caius. Uh, the Mind Control is more safer because he can summon the Diva and Synchro Summon. So I lose this game, so we'll go to game three now. He sets a very interesting side deck. Um, he sides into Massacre Restrict um, to stop my Lone Fire, but he's going second, so I'm not sure why he sided that. I would not side that in going second in the event that I have Lone Fire. So I summon Lone Fire here. Uh, I think he's trying to play around, make me stop Caius too, but this hurts him too, because I'm looking at his hand. He does have Caius here. He could easily tribute summon with Massacre Restrict up, so I'm not entirely sure why he uh, sided Massacre Restrict. So uh, yeah, so. Uh, I was hoping to draw into like a back row to deal with the Taster here, but I didn't. So uh, I still make the Titanial even though he might have a Deep Sea Diva, because I can deal with uh, I can deal with any level five synchro afterwards uh, with the Shiny Angel and the Mystic Tomato. 
So he summons a deep CD over here and he goes into a level 5, which is going to be Catastrophe. Tax over my Titanial here, which is good. And then he just sets a back row, I believe. Yeah, he sets a mask restrict. Uh, I don't know if, if he should side restrict here uh, because I've already used Lone Fire. Um, and the worst thing that could happen to him is if I mark the rose. I mean, the best scenario for him would be if I mark the rose, take the Catastrophe, and then he, if he's afraid that I might tribute summon, he would have to force activate the Mask Restrict. And then it doesn't play around the fact that I might have a tuner to Synchro Summon with the uh, Catastrophe. So more reasons why Restrict is really bad against uh, my deck. Because my deck doesn't just Tribute Summon. Um, but his deck kind of relies on Kai's more than mine does. So I set the DD Worry Lady because of the way the damage step works. Um, if he attacks my face down Light Monster, Catastrophe actually gets banished by DD Worry Lady because uh, Catastrophe activates a subset 1. DD Worry Lady activates or flips on subset 2. So the timing's off. So he tributes the Catastrophe for the Kai. So uh, he attacks for 24 here. I draw for turn here. I go to 6. And then I could summon the the, uh, the Shiny Angel. I had the option of um, attacking and dropping the Honest here, or I can go into a DD Warrior Lady. But I realized that I, I took out the... I don't have a second DD Warrior Lady, so he has to, I have to waste the Honest here. So I attack him here, and Aonis is here. Uh, at every point in time, I don't set any back rows, because uh, I want to give him the impression that I have Heavy Storm in my hand. So that's why he's not setting more than one, which is why he's playing around that fact um yeah he sets another back row and pretty much banking on me not having heavy storm i don't have heavy storm so this pretty much telegraphs uh that i don't have it because i don't activate heavy storm here uh attack with shiny angel here he deprisons and since i didn't normal summon i did set the tomato here uh, i don't know if i uh, i shouldn't i don't think i should have set tomato here because um he could activate nolman across out. he's been holding a pretty big hand his whole game so i don't know if he might have Nolman across out. So I think maybe I should have summoned the Tomato in attack position. But I don't know. Uh, he activates Future Fusion here. He dumps his Malicious and his Treeborn. He doesn't banish for the uh, Malicious. Which tells me that he has Malicious in hand. Or he just didn't have a Synchro play that he could have done. Um, he does have his Deep Sea Diva. So uh, him not doing it right away tells me he doesn't have Deep Sea Diva. Or he has Malicious in hand. So that's kind of big tell if he dumps the malicious and he doesn't have anything. Um, yeah, so I take that with consideration that he doesn't have Deep Sea Diva. So what I do is I flip the tomato here and just straight attack. Okay, so he sets a Ididi Crow on standby phase to hit the malicious so he doesn't Miracle Fusion. And it looks like he does draw into Miracle Fusion. I don't know why he didn't activate Miracle Fusion when he had it the entire time. Uh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure why he did that. Maybe he was afraid that I might sacrifice so i guess he did misplay a little bit uh he did have the miracle fusion and he didn't he chose not to activate it uh so he passes here so this is pretty much lethal i summon the plague spreader zombie to synchro into brio i mean goyo sorry and then i spell some of the chaos sorcerer and i top deck for plague uh to do more than 5200 damage so uh that's the game for you uh so yeah that was the game against the hero matchup uh i'm gonna have another commentary video for a different video uh so stay tuned for that one it's gonna be still the same deck but with uh, uh but with different matchups just to show you guys what the deck can do all right I'll see you guys in the next one